It's time for the One Bar and Lepica Show, bringing you anything and everything Minnesota Vikings. Welcome to professional football. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus show. I am One Bar with Lepagus, and today we are talking about five steaming, steaming hot storylines entering training camp. So hot. So hot, we might even have a sixth sneaky one at the end. We do have a sixth. Spoiler alert. Sorry, I couldn't couldn't keep it in anymore. I was so excited. I, I don't blame you. We got all the rookies are officially, the draft class is officially signed. Yeah. And did you freeze? No, I didn't. I'm just like waiting for you to give some great insight. Why <laughs> you froze? The rookies are signed. They report they suppose they reported today. So and then the twenty eighth, the entire team is reporting for training camp. So it is happening. My purple juices are flowing. Yeah, it's exciting. Every single rookie under contract. Um, they haven't released anybody yet. I thought they had to cut seven guys here before camp gets going. Maybe those will come in tonight. I don't know what's going to happen with that. but uh, I, I think they have to do that by the time the whole team reports. Oh, so they got till Tuesday. All right. I believe so. Um, that's so weird. Um, and that's one of our talkers. I don't want to get into it too much. Yeah, let's, let's hop into this. So five top training camp talkers. Let's start with number one. What do you got? Uh, well, it's the big guy in the room. It's the big guy in the world. It's COVID. How is it going to affect training camp? Uh, we already know there's no preseason games. So um, I, I, th- you know, I think this makes every practice that much more important, especially when they scrimmage each other. Uh, those, that, those game situations are going to be huge. Uh, the one-on-one drills, the, you know, the, the team drills, those are all going to have way more importance this year. And that's where the guys really have to step up, especially the guys who are trying to fight for a for a roster spot, for a starting spot, those, those camp battles. That's where they have to shine. Yeah, not only on the player side of things where there's a lot more pressure of their very small window to perform, but uh, also there's going to be changes throughout this whole training camp, even though there's no preseason games. But between now and the start of the season, who knows what's going to come up? Who knows what things are going to throw in as far as maybe there's bigger practice squads. Maybe you keep more than 53 players just because they know some people are going to get it, it's going to be a very interesting, interesting next couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we, we've seen the rumored face masks that they might be wearing. Guys got to get used to that. Um, you, you know, are they going to be tested every day, every other day? How is that going to work? What's going to happen there? There's all kinds of stuff that needs to, you know, come into play here. But let's just all be thankful that this shit is still going on. I mean, it could easily be just be canceled. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And I'm pretty excited that the train camp's getting underway. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually fairly surprised it is, but let's hope it continues. So let's get into number two, actual Vikings mm. talk, big talker. Get Will. into number two? Huh? Did you say get into number two? Let's get into number two. Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Is he going to show up? It's been very, very quiet since he said he wasn't. And uh, all signs point to him probably not getting that contract before the season starts. So it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Not fun to watch. Horrifying. I I think he's going to show. I really do. I don't know why. It's just my gut feeling. And my gut has been getting a little bit bigger lately. Um, I don't know. I, I just think he realizes that, uh, you know, maybe his best bet is just to show up, play, um, impress the team, be a professional, and then, you know, earn that contract extension. Um I will be more surprised at this point if he if he actually holds out. Oh, I think he's absolutely showing up. Absolutely. It's not – it never pans out. It's very rare it pans out for the person holding out. He's going to get fined. He's going to be in the possibility of losing a year. So he's going to be there, especially for how jacked up this season is. He's got to show. He's going to be there. Yeah, and like, we, know we already talked about this a lot, but he, he doesn't have a ton of leverage. you got Alexander Madison. you got Mike Boone, those two guys – they can carry the load if need be. So it's not like the Vikings are absolutely screwed. Yeah, they're not the playmakers Delvin Cook you know, is. But when Gary Kubiak was uh, offensive coordinator in Denver, he made Ruben Drones look like the next Ladanian Tomlinson. Ruben Drones. He was on my fantasy team. Ruben Drones played for the Giants. I think he was even on my fantasy team when he played for them. I love yeah, Rube. He's, he's like your second-round pick every year. Rubeski. So Dalvin Cook, I hope he shows up. I hope he, I hope he shows up more pissed off than ever as a ginormous season and then goes to the Vikings and say, look, give me my cheddar. Yeah. And they will. I think they will. They're pretty good about resigning their own guys. Give me my cheddar. Let's talk with another guy who will be earning some cheddar this year. 
Uh, that is our first round pick, Justin Jefferson. Um, what, you know, what do you think? Is he gonna is he gonna live up to the hype? Is he gonna be worth the twenty second pick? Is he gonna be the heir apparent to Stephon Diggs? Wow. Well, all eyeballs will be on him, and eyeballs meaning that nobody can go to training camps and nobody's gonna be watching him. We're gonna have to see what everybody says about him. But yeah, Justin Jefferson comes in. Uh, you know, we've been burned more than not with first round, first round receivers and Justin Jefferson, even though we got Adam Thielen, he is our number one guy. Jefferson will have some pressure and damn it. He better end this little streak of first round receivers being shit. Yeah. But you know what he has? Laquan Treadwell did not have, uh, he's uh got athletic fire. ability. Well, he's got fire. He's got work ethic. Uh, you've seen these videos he's been putting on Twitter. This guy's working his ass off. Uh, he's coming in with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, even for being a, a first round pick. And I love that. Um, I love his swagger. He's got, he's got an air about him. And I, I do think he's going to step right in the field and uh, make plays from day one. Yeah. Justin Jefferson, I've said it over and over. I think he's the most, one of the most NFL ready rookie receivers coming in here. The fact that it's a short screwed up training camp slash preseason. I think he's got, I think he's got the upper hand. I think he will be our number two. And I think he will live up to the hype as a rookie. I'm 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 100 on board with you on that one. All right, let's talk about something that's super super gross. Number four, let's talk about our guards. Our guards. It is completely yeah. up in the air right now. Yeah. You talk about one position that doesn't have any starters set in stone. Uh, this is the one that uh, that has all the question marks. You know, I think your your money. You know, if you're gonna be make a safe bet, uh, I think left guard Pat Elfline, right guard Drew Samia is probably the favorites. Um, but there's no reason the Vikings shouldn't make this an open competition. You got if, if they do move Ole Udo inside, which I haven't heard anything about that lately, I think he's got a great shot. Um, why not give Kyle Hinton a chance? Um, make this a true competition. Make the best guy earn it. It only makes everybody else better. Uh, Ezra Cleveland, you know, he said again in a recent interview that he can play guard, and he might, you know, maybe he's going to move inside. And if he does, hey, Ezra Cleveland, Drew Samia, I could roll with that. Wow, I'm uh, I'm actually going. I, I think it's going to be Pat Alfine, the bulldozer. I think it's going to be Dakota Dozier over there. Drew yeah. Samia, this would have been fantastic for him to get a full preseason as our starting guard, uh, a full training camp as our starting guard, and now he doesn't get that. Uh, we'll see what happens. I, I think it's Dozier's spot to lose. I think he will lose yeah, it eventually, but I think they start with him. With Dozier, we've seen what he can do, and it's not much when he starts. Um, he was overpowered. I think he's better coming in off the bench. Um, when he started, things just did not go well. And granted, he did get some tough competition. I mean, he had to start against Denver. He had to start against the Bears. So he, he wasn't going against scrubs, but he was a major liability. Well, whoever it is, uh, even if it is some Samia, he's going to have some quite the learning curve out there. It's going to be gross. Guard is going to be terrible to watch this year. Well, There's no way around it. It's, it's, it's the one position the Vikings just kind of ignored in free agency, ignored in the draft, and they cut their best player at the position. If, if it does go bad and it becomes a huge weakness, it's, you can only blame the front office. They set themselves up for this. I'm going to blame you. All right, number five, big talker, big one. Rookies not getting a fair shake. Uh, we got 15 guys we drafted, not including undrafted free agents. And this year, they don't, they got nothing to showcase. They're gonna have to prove it in practice. Well, it sucks because every year we always get that undrafted guy who comes in and makes the team. Last year it was Brandon Dillon, Eric Wilson. You know, a couple years before that, every year an undrafted guy will make the Vikings fifty-three man roster. Uh, and this year it's gonna be so much harder. And, and you got some great options, really: you Courtney Davis, Neville Clark, Miles Dorn, Dan Chasina. All these guys in a normal preseason, I think, would have a great shot to. Um, you know, not only make the 53, but, you know, practice squad too, because they're long shots for that as well. Um, and this is where these guys are really getting screwed, especially week one of the preseason, week four, where that's their time to shine. That is, you know, that's when they get to play. You look at Jake Browning too, another, you know, Nate Stanley, these, these guys, these are their reps and they're all gone now. And it's, it, it puts all that much more importance on every day in practice. Well, it's not even just the reps and showcasing. It's the fact that the coaches are going to want to go with somebody that they actually know what they got, know, know what they've done out there. Like if it comes down to keeping a whatever Jalen Holmes or the David Moa constrictor, they're, they're going to keep the guy that they know what they have, that knows the scheme, knows the system, has been out there, 
and uh, they're not going to get too risky when I think when it comes to rookies. So I, I still think we end up keeping at least one on draft free agent. Yeah, I, I hope so. And, you know, obviously look at the, the favorites. I do think Courtney Davis is a major favorite for that. Um, and Neville Clark, Miles Dorn, any of those three, I think really, um, if one of those three don't make the team, I'll be shocked. You know who's going to be the biggest Miles Dorn fan in the next couple of weeks? You. Me. Dornsky. Dornsky. I once had a professor named Mr. Dorn. He was a real stickler. Oh, God. He sounds like a dick. All right. We're throwing in a bonus here. Final, final. Great bowler, though. I bet he does. He sounds like a great bowler. Who will be this year's Mr. Mankato? Who will be this year's training camp stallion standout that everybody loves? I'm not uh, just going to name a name. I'm going to say this is a guarantee. This is a Lepagus guarantee. I, I have this weird feeling about the same guy. I hope it's not. Is it Dan Tresina? No, it's not. This guy, um, I don't know how much he's going to make as a, as a receiver, but he's a hell of a special teamer, fast as hell. Uh, special teams are his bread and butter. He is going to shock people. He's going to be the first one down, I guess, in practice. Uh, first one hugging down? Hugging the returner. Um, I, I think I think he's just one of these hardworking guys. He, you know, he was a walk-on at was it Penn State, right? Is that where he is? Damn right, it's Penn State. Yeah, um, it's already in his blood to you know to to fight to be the underdog, and uh, I think he's gonna just you know latch on to Adam Thielen and and kind of be the next Adam Thielen, work his way from special teams to being a stud wide receiver. Dan I see a Chisina. nice feature Disney film being about Dan Chasina someday, and I can't wait to watch it. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm going. Uh, I'm going with a second year man. I'm going with Brandon Dillon. Uh, Brandon Dillon. You know we got we got Kyle Rudolph. Obviously they're gonna they're gonna let him just kind of hang out. He's got nothing to prove, so it's gonna be big stinky herb and Brandon Dillon out there quite a bit. And Brandon Dillon, when he gets a chance, surprisingly he has shined quite a bit. And I think Tyler Conklin should be a little scared in his pantaloons because Brandon Dillon, he uh, he can play. No, I agree. And Brandon Dillon's a much better receiver than Tyler Conklin. The one thing though. If Conklin does get cut, I do not think it'll take him a long time to get signed by somebody else. Uh, you look at some of these tight end depth charts around the league, and they're pretty gross. I do think Conklin will be with an NFL team this year, even if it's not the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, well, we once thought Bucky Hodges was going to be the next Hall of Fame tight end. and What happened? Cut, guess what? Nobody wanted him. He went to the what Steelers or something. Sucked. Yeah, he, he did go to the Steelers. Turns out Bucky Hodges was not very good. <laughs> you know, Virginia Tech. It was, his name was Bucky. We liked him because of that. He was Bucky. Right. He was athletic. He he actually was very good at Virginia Tech. Just didn't he have some kind of really angry tweets again? Yeah, uh, he did. So, yeah, He's very very angry. I don't want to talk about it. Bucky's in the past. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. Those are our five and a half big talkers going in the training camp. Uh, let us know in the comments who your Mister Mankato is or what Ooh. you think will be a big talker. Hell yeah! And until then, guys, remember this: honey, when sealed never goes bad. It'll last forever.